Hi kindergarten, welcome to reading class. Um, this week we're going to be practicing story structure. And so we've done this a lot in school. We've practiced going through and being able to read a story and to tell who are the characters, what is the setting, which means where the story takes place, and then how does the story happen from beginning to middle to end, okay? And so you guys have done this a bunch of times. We're just gonna keep practicing the same thing, and so I thought I would model that for you guys real quick using a story we're all familiar with, which is The Three Little Pigs, okay? And so I'm gonna move my camera so you can see my little chart. Um, I am not an artist, so we are just gonna do our best like we always do. All right, guys, so story structure, story structure. The title of our story is The Three Little Pigs. And first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna think about our characters, okay? Our main characters, I'm gonna put a star here because the characters are like the star of the show. Who is the story about? What are the um, people or animals that star in the story? Well, in The Three Little Pigs, bet you guys guessed it, we have the three pigs and we have the big bad wolf, all right? Some versions of the three little pigs also have the three little pigs mother who sends them off. Some have other characters. There's lots of different ways that the story of the three little pigs have been told. But for our chart today, we're just gonna put the three little pigs and the big bad wolf. Next, we're gonna go over here to setting, okay? Setting is where the story takes place. Where is this story happening? All right, and if you think about the three little pigs, there's more than one setting, and that is okay. You are allowed to have more than one setting, just like you're allowed, in fact, supposed to have more than one character in most stories, okay? So our setting is their houses, right? The three little pigs each have their own house, and the story takes place in each of their houses. And I feel like also we could include at least in the version of the three little pigs that I've read, it's usually somewhere in like a forest, okay? And again, if the book you're reading is not set in a forest or it's not in set in houses, you wouldn't write that, right? You would write wherever that story happens to be happening. All right, and then down here we have one, two, three, and four. And what those are for is putting the events of the story in order. We also have sometimes done it as B for beginning, M for the middles, and E for the end, all right? Either way, both are really common ways of doing a story structure chart. And so I drew what happened, and as you guys know, I am not an art teacher, so I just did my best, kind of like how when you guys are doing this, all I expect is that you do your best. It doesn't have to be perfect. Don't worry about it, okay? So up here, I drew the first event, which is that the three little pigs go and the first little pig builds his house out of straw. He builds his house out of straw and then the big bad wolf comes and he knocks it all over. He knocks it all over. He huffs and puffs and blows the house down. Then what happens next is they go and they run to the second little pig's house, which is built out of sticks. But sadly, the big bad wolf follows them. He huffs and puffs, he blows the house down. Then they go to the third little pig's house, which is built out of bricks, because that little pig was thinking ahead, right? He built his house out of bricks, and the big bad wolf came and he huffed and puffed, and he tried to blow the house down, but it didn't work. And then at the end of the story, usually the three little pigs trick the wolf into trying to jump down the chimney, and obviously the, the wolf who jumps down the chimney doesn't meet a happy end, and he is defeated, okay? and so. At the very end of the story, the big bad wolf is not a problem anymore. The three little pigs get to live happily ever after, and they can just chill in their house full of bricks, okay? So do you guys see how when I'm telling the story, I'm making sure that I'm telling the most important parts. Part of retelling a story is that you don't have to include every single detail. It's good to include details, but for instance, you don't have to include like every single thing. Like if I were retelling this from a storybook and there were better pictures than mine and there were lots of like detailed pictures where there were like little animals that the three little pigs saw in the background or anything like that or like there were a mail there was a mailbox in front of the houses I wouldn't have to retell that part. I just want to tell the parts of the story that are important enough that without them the story wouldn't make sense. All right, so you guys are going to try this today. Um with a Curious George story, which I know you guys love. 
Um, and I'm really excited. You guys are just going to be doing your journeys workbook. You're going to be finding the ending of the Curious George story. So while you're listening to the story, I want you to be thinking, what is the ending event or ending events of the story? And then you're going to write or draw them. Okay? All right. Bye.